for Games for Change in Australia. All the way from Australia, here is Marigo Rastopoulos. Thank you for having me in your beautiful city. Um, you've been sitting for a little while yet, so can everyone just stand up and have a bit of a stretch? So, up, up you get. Bit of a stretch. High five the person behind you. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Fantastic. Sit down. Great. Okay. Now. What I will be talking about is um, the win conditions for enterprise gamification, as you can see. I've been working in strategy for over 20 years, and in that time, I've used a lot of role-playing games in, in helping organisations get to the, the crux of what their strategy is and what a good innovation strategy is to move their organisation forward. Um, but then moved on to um, serious games, and then when gamification became a thing, and it became far more accessible, I saw that that was a really good opportunity to start accelerating what uh, the work I was doing in strategy and innovation. So the key, the, I went back and did some research because um, I felt that at the time, I don't know if that's getting a bit of echo with it, is that better? Um, you know, when you had a certain person that said gamification is bullshit, and then you had Gartner that said there's, there's a 80% failure rate, I thought, well, maybe we need to step back. I know the potential of games. Other practitioners I know know the power of games and gamification, but let's do some solid research in order to make sure that we know what we are doing and we are being rigorous in what we are doing. Because every time I would approach clients in the enterprise space, I would say, show me the proof, show me the evidence. Anecdotal is not good enough. So that's why I took time out over the last four years and right near the end of it. Um, and I'll share some of those findings here for you today, especially in the area of how do we as practitioners get our act together to level up? Because we're in a situation where we have enormous amount of experience and a great community, but what organisations are telling us through the research is that we can do a little bit better. So part of the research I'll be showing you is that where we can improve as practitioners, but also if you're um, a, an organisation that's looking to buy or invest in gamification, it gives you some clues as to the challenges you face internally in an organisation. So I'm not going to talk too fast, but I calculate it. I'm here for 20 minutes, but I have done 1.3 million minutes of research. So I'm going to squeeze as much of that in in 20 minutes as possible without driving you crazy. That sound okay? Right, okay. Um, so the research, so university research, peer reviewed, I've had five publications so far, it's now with examiners, so it's sort of it's off the off my desk now. What we started with is um, we audited three over three hundred gamification projects. So enterprise gamification projects where they said we have invested in gamification. So we took those um, experiences and we just logged what it is that they did and with that we developed a taxonomy of game design patterns. Um, the next step was taking a sample of that and did a global survey of 25 leading organisations. Some of them are down there, as you can see, with their logos. And we did deep analysis of their experiences. So, and you know, we talked a lot about what they, were, what they were doing, how they did it, and most importantly with the stuff that I'll, I'll talk about a bit later, what are the failures and what are the, the, the areas that we can, we can improve as a community. So with that, um, it's quite a, a both, both parts of the, the research were quite significant for its time. Um, the 25 um, organisations uh, between them, collectively there's 11.5 million affected users, so it's quite a sizable um, reach for these particular projects, so the learnings from it um, are quite significant. Now, the, the first part is looking at um, enterprise gamification as a whole. Now, I'm, I'm part of a, a systems thinking background as well, and the number one rule in systems thinking is that a bad system beats a good person every time. So whether you have um, a great soul, a lot of um, the, the gamification that we do tends to centre around the front end, which is the motivational affordances and the interfaces. Other people are working feverishly in the background with data and analytics. 
But in any gamification project, particularly if you want to invest and sell into the, the big organisations, you need to look at the whole system because part of your gamification will work really well at that front end, the motivational part, but the whole system, if it's not redesigned to take that into account, will always squash those results. And very often with a lot of the projects that we've seen, they've had an initial you know, six weeks, two months in a boost, and then the rest of the system within the organisation bears down on it and actually suffocates a lot of those results and organisation goes back to normal. So part of what I'll be talking about is looking at our capabilities across all areas of designing for the whole organisation, not just the little application that we're looking at. That is important, but to level up, we need to be looking at a systems approach. So in terms of a definition, um, I don't want to get caught up in definitions because I know there's a bit of a, a war going on in some of those uh, LinkedIn and Facebook groups at the moment in terms of what it is, but I want you to look beyond the words towards what our organisation is telling us. Now, the definitions that have come out of the research that we've done, it's, it's centres around a set of design patterns, technologies and capabilities that enable an organisation to meet its value creation objectives. So you might think, you know, so what are they really trying to tell us? They're looking for new tools. Now that's sort of not news, that's fine, but when we as practitioners are selling to them, we're selling them solutions, but they're looking for far more than that. The time has just gone up and I realise I've been talking too much. <laughs> so I was sort of quickening it up a bit. Also looking about what gamification is. It is many things, and every, spe every talk I've heard so far is talking about gamification as something different. So and I think what we need to do is, because we're early stage and because it's evolving, we need to honour the fact that it is many things. It is a product. It is a way of thinking. It is a process. It's an experience. And it's a designerly way, because a lot of this has come from human-computer interaction research over the last sort of 10, 15 years. So there's a lot that we can learn from the research that's already been done. And above all, it is also a system. So the outcomes of this research, um, I've already, uh, all my research is available for free online um, in its published form. Um, I'll be writing a plain English pra practitioner's handbook, and that's due to release next year. Uh, so effectively what we're looking at is you need a very rigorous design process. You need, the second part is understanding the design elements and the design patterns of what the experience that we've seen and also the limitations of what has already been used. And what I'll focus on now is capability development because the biggest issue that we have at the moment is not in the designing and the understanding and the concepts, but how do organisations integrate these solutions in their organisations in a sustainable way. Now, there are three nodes. There is design, technology and management. And each one of those areas has got a whole big ecosystem about what works, what doesn't, and what we need to do to make those three areas work better. Um, now, with, with the data points in these particular areas, there's quite a few, but I'll give you the top four for each of those three areas. And to start off with technology, and I know that, uh, you know, technology has somewhat been taken over the debate in terms of what gamification is, but the bad news is, as far as these organisations are concerned, it is the weak link in the chain. Our technology is still not good enough and no one is being open and honest about that. A quote that uh, is uh, reflecting of that, it says, the barriers were primarily with technology. I do not believe vendor solutions are mature enough yet. And that was a general sentiment that came out quite across most of those organisations. So the key elements here in terms of what were the, the failures and the challenges, defer, is, um, is platform capability. They've got some nice, new, swanky technologies, but when it comes time to align and integrate them with legacy systems, there are quite a few problems. Vendor capability, they say that us as practitioners, we're good, we're exciting, we've got great ideas, but we're still not there yet. We still need to level up, and particularly in terms of understanding how organisations work and understanding the importance of strategy and value creation not just on the engagement bit, which they get, but they just want us to understand the whole ecosystem of an organisation. System integration I mentioned, and data and analytics, most organisations say it's still not there yet. We're over-promising and under-delivering on the quality of data and analytics. 
The next part is design, and it was sort of quite cute because everyone said that we tend to overestimate our design capabilities. Now that's really good because design has, since design thinking came in 10, 15 years ago, everyone wants to be a designer. We love that creative part, which is excellent. But there's still, there's, a, there's an art and there's a science and there's a craft to that. And perhaps we're sort of not sort of quite there yet, or there's, there's much more room to improve. Uh, a common theme that we heard was that there was little structure and focus in the design process. We ended up with meaningless use of game mechanics. We heard that quite a, quite a lot. So once again, where we can improve strategic design, design literacy, customer focus, and selective, being very selective in gamefulness. Now, the last one was the most critical element. And I know here we talk about we love our design, we love our technology, but at the end of the day, once we pass that on to the client, then we sort of walk away. But what we need to be part of that management and integration process, um, and what sort of organisations are saying, is that they would have spent more time up front looking at the design thinking elements, looking at what are the implications, and how is this the bigger picture? How is it more than just the designs? Sorry to race through this, but I'm racing the clock. Okay, so multi-dimension is key. When we look at motivational affordances and what engages us and all this kind of stuff, that's only one-sixth of the equation. And from what we understand about user acceptance of technology and how that's integrated, there's multiple areas that I think as designers we probably overlook when we're designing gamification. And that includes utility, usability, the information quality, the quality of the overall system, and the net benefits. But at the end of the day, we looked at a lot of projects where People said, I loved playing the game, it was great, but it didn't help my job do better. It didn't give me the information I needed. So at the end of the day, the user loves the interface, thinks it's a great experience, but if it doesn't help them do their job better, it's not considered you know, a top success. User support, obviously very important, and also that engagement part is important, but it's only part of the equation, particularly when you're looking at workplace gamification in big organisations. So the next steps is you as a, as a designer. The message that's coming through loud and clear is that half of the problem is a business problem. How do you connect with strategy? How do you integrate and work with managers? How do you integrate with their systems? And how do you create value that's tangible? The, the rest is almost like an even split between game design thinking, thinking like a game designer. But it's beyond just the game designer. It's thinking about how to build the whole system. And what we forget as gamification designers is that a real game designer, and we're not, we don't want to be game designers, they design whole systems. We're only designing part of the system. But in the process, that we're losing one of the really key important elements of how the rest of the system relates to each other. So that's sort of a, probably the next step that we need to take about looking at a whole systems approach. And obviously, there's not specific design skills the integration, and solid technological foundations, which are still sort of um, severely limited. <laughs> so in terms of, I think I'm going to make it in time, which is great. So the advice for innovation. So part of all this process in terms of where I've, I've come from and what my specific focus was looking at, how can gamification drive innovation and creativity in organisations? Because that's my main focus. A lot of these organisations, they're big conservative organisations, but they're scared. They know they need to change. I do a lot of work in banking and finance. They know their days are numbered and they want us to think differently and innovatively. So that's an open invitation. But what they're saying to us, we want to trust you, but you need to show us that you have got far bigger skill set and far bigger insight than what you're currently showing us. So in terms of um, us as an industry, in terms of being careful of our thinking and our language, is, say, is looking that this is not a game. It's not about, it is about fun and games, but what is the deeper message here? And the message here is that the current system that we have is not engaging us. And it's the part of the reason for that is, 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 a, whole, is, is a whole system, it's, it's system. So it's about looking at, maybe there was a warning. But the second part is that looking at embedded values in a system. Games represent the existing status quo. Now, anything that's designed reflects a society's values and morals. So a game is designed around what's known as the military-industrial complex. It's a hierarchy, it's command and control. If you're looking solely at games, if you're looking solely at games, what in fact you're doing, you're just reproducing the status quo. 
The problem is now, when we're looking at, uh, looking at behaviour design and, behavior and all this kind of thing, what people are sick of being designed for. What we're looking for is greater movement and freedom, and games are only just a reflection of what we already have, except with the window dressing. So we need to sort of move away from that. The system can form a lot of the existing technologies, um, a lot of the platforms that have been experimented with. For organisations that are looking for innovation, it doesn't allow people to think outside of what, what the experiences that you have controlled because you think you want a certain outcome. The problem is, if your existing system sucks, then you're not going to get that creative result through and you're only going to get a temporary improvement in, in overall performance. So what we're looking at is looking at creating new systems and channeling people through um, behaviour design and behaviour control and all this kind of thing only really works in areas where you have, you're pretty sure that you've got a fantastic system, but even then you're corralling people down a process if you think that you know that that's the outcome. But in an era where there is a lot of unknowns and organisations are going through tremendous disruption, we need to be open up, we need to help our people open up and be a lot more creative rather than think that we're designing for something that is probably not as innovative as what we might think it is. And I think that's it. 1.3 million minutes of credit. Presentation. The one in front, there's the mic. Yeah, the ladies. <laughs> the ladies. Time. There is. Ladies first. Sorry, Zidro. I'll buy you a beer tonight. Maybe? Yes. You too, <laughs> of course. <laughs> ladies first. Hi there. Uh, Hi. Amazing talk, by the way. Um, well, I'm a strategic designer, I'm looking for new opportunities in my field, and it came to my attention when you mentioned about the systems organization and the complexity of it. Uh, how deep do you go into the, the research before moving into an MVP? Uh, what piece of advice would you give us? Um, so, how, did you repeat that last bit again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, how deep do you go into the complexity and the research before moving into an MVP? Mm -hmm. uh, and what's the point in between for companies and for your, uh, your own organization? Yeah. It's uh, a lot of the time when I go into an organization and they say, this is the problem, right? And we, and usually they've already got the solution in mind that we want gamification to fix this thing. And I always go, okay, let's wait. Let's have a look at what is happening, what is, and they've always resisted. Now we've done the analysis, we know all that kind of thing, but what you need to do is talk to them about, let's unpack the problem. So most of my projects spend most of the time unpacking the problem and all the different areas of that. And then when producing an MVP, it's looking at what is the leverage point for one part. So rather than try and fix the whole problem, zero in on one part and do run little experiments. So it's a completely agile approach because the organisation needs to see proof of concept. Um, but once again, the, the prob usually the problems I find are strategic, that the strategy has been misaligned in the first place. The focus is not 100% there um, and they need to do more work on that. And it's really difficult to give organisations that advice because often they say, but we want to build a game. And I said, you can have your game, but let's understand what the problem is. And invariably, when you take them through that process, they still want their game, but then they have a lot of things that is up on the whiteboard or is, has come out of the process that they fix in other parts of the organisation through a different process. Because invariably, gamification can't fix all those things. The process can help identify. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank Pleasure. You. Since the ladies there are almost jumping on stage, I need to. <laughs> Hi. You. Thank you for the, your presentation. Excellent. Um, like as an engineer working in gamification, how is your advice to for us how we would improve our skills or maybe improve our the team, our team technology team to work to improve the gamification and technology in the same level, in the same part, because I know, I know the problems of technology in yeah. gamification right now. Yeah, the, uh, the, there's two parts to that. In terms of improving human capability, it's so new at the moment. I mean, there's, there's lots of different courses, um, 
and it, it's really difficult because a lot of, there's a lot of research that's coming out at the moment. When I started four years ago, there wasn't a lot. Now we know a lot more. So I think at the moment, for you sitting there, it's actually quite difficult if you're just starting out because it's learning from the amazing practitioners that are here. It's learning from the researchers and feeling your way around. And I think for that one, there is no easy answer. So I think it's doing connecting with as many people as possible and, um, and, and learning as you go. So, you know, it's, oh, it's excellent. It's <laughs> like we are yeah. trying to do it right now. We are trying yeah. to work like a team. Uh, uh, really a team, not like yeah. only a technology part. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think all the practitioners, we're excellent in our areas as well, so it's it's almost like you need to learn a little bit from everyone. Yeah. I know it sounds, because everyone has yeah. it focused on different areas, because we've had to, you can't, it's really hard to look at the whole thing. In terms of the technology side, a lot, half the companies that have used platforms experimented with existing platform providers then walked away and said we'll build our own so at the moment it's either you use existing platforms or build your own and there's uh, it was amazing that we that came up in the first 300 that we assessed and it was verified in this other surveys after that so there are a lot of organizations that finding it too hard to integrate platforms and are now sort of looking at rebuilding their own or, or building this from scratch. And there's quite a few that have done that. Okay. So once again, not easy either. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.